Good Friday morning, meaning Good Friday. Okay, today is the, uh, the, the day of our redemption. This Good Friday is the day that Christ died for us. You read St. Paul, you really see that it is in the death of Christ that we are redeemed, revealed on Easter Sunday. But the redemption occurs, you see it in St. John's Gospel especially, that Christ dies and triumphs on the cross. The church is born out of the side of Christ when water and blood flow from his side. That's the Eucharist and baptism. And the world has changed. It's never been the same. He redeems us. Christ redeems us through his obediential death. He was obedient to his Father. As St. Paul said in the letter to the Philippians, even unto death, death on the cross. He dies a criminal. And in dying the criminal's death, he redeems us from the criminality of sin itself. And it's hellish outcome. We are redeemed in Christ. And the truth be told, the meanings of our lives are directly connected to the narrative of the passion. What St. Paul tells us, we fill up those things wanting in the suffering of Christ. As a half-baked philosopher, and that's all I am, I like to think I'm half-decent. I don't know if I am. And you have to ask the students. Ask the kid. No, he's really dumb. Oh, anyway. Uh, to find meaning in life, one has, to begin, one has to be able to look at evil and death in the face. You can't skirt it. You can't find meaning if death is final. Because if death is final, so is evil. There is evil in the world that is unredeemed and unredeemable. And that's a horrible thought. And when I think of the Holocaust, I think of the horror of unredeemed death, if they are unredeemed. I believe they are redeemed. I have no doubt of it, actually, in my heart. Because they are, st they are the suffering of Christ in the world. Whether they acknowledge it or not is irrelevant. They fill up those things wanting in the suffering of Christ. So this is the suffering of all humanity, individually, personally. That's the truth. Whether it's in the simpler things of our lives, like just the ordinariness of our lives, or in the hugely dramatic scenes in the human story, the Holocaust, the Second World War. I believe 80 million people were killed in the Second World War. Think about that, 80 million. The devastations in Europe and Asia, the amount of sacrifice here in the United States, men who went to war as young boys, 18, 19 years old, never came home. I think the men who died in landings in places like Iwo Jima, wow. Made good for movies, but it made horror for the homes. For the home, the parents and the friends and the spouses of the deceased. They were war hero, heroes, but they still died. Yeah. I find myself more and more, I'm grateful I'm a passionist because our passionist vocation centers us on the great mystery of Good Friday. We concentrate on that. We preach, we preach Christ crucified and we contemplate it. It is the centerpiece of our reflective life as a passionist community. It's really true. And think of that line of St. Paul. We fill up those things wanting in the suffering of Christ. It's the only meaning I can find in life. And I find it at the foot of the cross and not to be pious. That we share in the passion of Christ. I'm grateful for my passion and vocation, I have to say. As a philosopher, whether I'm a good one or a bad one, it doesn't make any difference. I make a living out of reflecting on life. When I reflect on it, I feel the call of Good, good Friday the hope that in death and in suffering, life emerges for each person. Not in general, not some kind of ecological view, but powerfully personal. And that nurtures my hope and my faith. I does because I can, I find I can look at life and not ask for more than it can give, but to treasure what it gives in the hope that when there is sadness, death, suffering, injustice, evil, life, life and grace, beauty and goodness are triumphant. And they, tri they are triumphant in the death of Christ. Manifested gloriously on Easter Sunday. I really mean what I'm saying here. I 
and more not only gave my life to the community in a sense, the passionists, I'm more grateful than I am generous, believe me, because I, the passionists, we preach Christ crucified because we believe and we contemplate the crucified Christ. It's everything about the passionate spirituality and passionate way of life. It's in the, in the air we breathe. Yeah, you have to be there. You have to know it. And it's so powerful. And you see the men live it. And you see them come to grips with life according to it in their share of the passion of Christ. That's, I think why we make it, we're very good chaplains in hospitals. I think. Because we see in the suffering that not injustice, but redemption. Not There is injustice, but we, there's injustice on Calvary. Christ was innocent, right? but he was crucified. And in life, people are often crucified. When you're in a hospital, especially in the emergency room and other places, you're in the presence of a crucified Christ. A few years in Baltimore, 69 and 71, when I helped out at St. Agnes Hospital. I saw the truth of that. I saw so much suffering, so much heartache, so much useless death. I remember one man went into a bar to pick up his wife. His wife was uh, was a waitress, not a bartender. She was a waitress and <laughs> in the robbed the place. And in the process, he shot the man and he didn't kill him. Instantly, the man was alive when I saw him. It came in at about 11 or 12 o'clock on a Saturday night. And I saw how alive he was and hopeful and alive. And I anointed him and all the rest. I felt so sure he was going to live. About an hour and a half later, I got a call that he was dead. He had died. And I thought, oh my God, he went in to pick up his wife. He comes out dead. And the, horror, the horror of it. I think I learned more in Baltimore those two years that I did travel. I was in the retreat house, but I think I learned more in the hospital where I saw, I saw so much, so much human suffering and death, but I also saw so much suffering that was due to injustice. I saw a lot of horror. It tempered me in many, many ways. And I've never forgotten. Here, look at this. Over 50 years ago, I'm telling you this story. Began to see that you had to have something. You had to believe in someone and something that can convert the horrible into the holy. And only the death of Christ can do that. You could say it's superstition. You could argue it's just... You could say whatever you want. But at least I have, through my faith, I have hope that goodness over evil triumphs that life over death triumphs. I have hope. Because of Christ's death, his Friday, Easter Sunday, but it's his death on the cross. It's not that he skipped through, gets incarnate and then he's glorified. He goes through the hellish death on the cross. But the worst death you could suffer meant to be brutally cruel. And it was. Romans knew how to keep order in the empire. Make sure when you punish somebody, they know they've been punished. Christ was tortured to death. It was a totally horrifying way to die. Not only through the bloody wounds, but suffocation on the cross. You died by your own dead weight, literally. I'm glad I'm grateful that I have a passionate vocation. Because in contemplating me, the passion of Christ. I'm able to look at the passion of the world, use a Tom Berry line, and the passion of all who suffer, the good, the innocent, and even the vile, that there's hope in redemption, there's hope in suffering, that nothing is vain, nothing is lost that can be saved. Quote famous philosopher Whitehead. Uh, he was looking at he was looking at Christ when he said that. And God, nothing is lost that can be saved. I have hope in that. I hope you do too. We especially get old. We can't look to tomorrow and say, ah, it's all gonna get. We have to help way more than that as a basis of our hope.
when we have that on Good Friday, Easter Sunday.